Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on irlonestar.com. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Weekly Business Hour. I'm Rick Schistler. I'm the host. I'm also a Silver Fox advisor and the founder of OneBestConsult.com. Well, I'm glad you've taken the opportunity to listen to the program today. Uh, We're doing some of our annual interviews over the next few weeks, and today we're going to have our annual conversation with uh, Dick Schistler. Dick is the general manager and the owner of Lone Star Community Radio, which is where we're broadcasting from this morning and on most days when the weekly business hour comes to you. As I mentioned, we're in the studios today at Lone Star uh, Community Radio, which is located right here in Conroe, Texas, one of the fastest growing cities uh, in America. Uh, I saw there was a new rating that just came out and said it's the eighth fastest growing city in America according to a lot of different criteria, but all you have to do is drive around, right? If you live here in Conroe, you live in Montgomery County, uh, it's just growing. Everywhere, it's growing. It's a great place to be, a great place to do business. Quick observation. Uh, There are a lot of new businesses opening here in Conroe and around Montgomery County right now. Um, You can get a handle on them if you'd like. Check out Community Impact uh, News Magazine. It comes out throughout the county. It's a magazine uh, a newsletter, whatever you want to call it. It's a magazine, though, in my opinion, that I believe, and I've mentioned this on the program before, everyone in business, everyone in business that depends on local business needs to have a copy of that and look at it as it comes out because it's got such great information about growth, both in housing, roads, everything, infrastructure other than roads. Uh, it talks about the new businesses opening, uh, it gives you an idea. You can figure where these new businesses are. Uh, perhaps you have products and services that you can literally put them on your mail list or call on them. So Community Impact, a great resource, a great tool for businesses here in Conroe and Montgomery County. What does all this growth mean to your business? That's a question to you. What does it mean? Well, there's one thing I think or a couple of things I think it really does Uh, mean to a lot of businesses, the ones that are growing, that are doing well. And I know a number of businesses, even during the pandemic, past few years, did very well. They continue to grow. And what it means to those businesses is you need to ask yourself a question. First, is it time to have a second location? I mean, if you're a storefront business and you work with the public or businesses across the counter, so to speak, it may be time to look for a second location using tools like Community Impact, et cetera, to find where the real growth is going on and where your business would have the best chance of succeeding. And the second thing is, it may be time to relocate your existing business, okay? You don't really want to consider a second location, and I get that. There's some real positives and negatives, plus and minuses of having a second location, no doubt about it. But it may be time to relocate your business. Uh, It's very rare today that a business can be located in one location for its entire life of, say, 20, 30, 40 years if you're blessed enough to have a business that lasts that long because things start to shift. And let me give you this consideration. As Conroe and Montgomery County grow, more and more the growth takes uh, takes, uh, place, then more likely that your business needs to move. It, it sort of picks up its own momentum. It may take 5, 10, 20 years, but the more likely that it would be benefit you and your business to relocate, to relocate where there's more business opportunities for you. So the opportunity to drive around Sunday afternoon or whenever, talk to other business people, 
talk to your local chamber of commerce. The Conroe Chamber, Lake Conroe Chamber is a great place to get local business information, economic development people. Find where the best locations might be for your business going forward. So just some quick observation considerations for you and your business. The weekly business hour is where Montgomery County and businesses throughout the world come to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve their businesses, and be part of a general conversation that can make a real difference to your business. So with that in mind, our goal is to provide information and education. And don't want you to forget, if you'd like to watch as well as listen to the show, you can do that right now. Simply go to Facebook or YouTube, type in the weekly business hour, and when it comes up, you'll see a button there. Click on it, and you can watch as well as listen real time to the weekly business hour. And also, I want to remind you, we appreciate emails. Send us emails, comments on the show, things we need to change, things you'd like to see. And most importantly, give us an idea of what your major concern is. If you've got a concern in your business, you'd like a, another point of view, I'd be glad to offer that point of view. In fact, oftentimes we'll go to the mailbag, as I like to say, and we'll pull out one of the emails and we'll talk about it on the show like we're going to do today later on in the program. So remember, emails. My direct email address is one, that's the number one, bestconsult at gmail.com, one bestconsult at gmail.com. Please send your emails. We love to receive them. Well, today, as I mentioned when I opened the show, we're going to have a conversation, and basically an annual conversation that we have with Dick Schussler. He's the general manager and owner of Lone Star Community Radio. We're going to talk about his journey as a small business owner and learn particularly what's in store for us in Montgomery County's community radio station in 2023. Dick, welcome to the program. Howdy, Rick. How are you doing? We're doing great. Beautiful day outside. Things are going on. We're in a brand new calendar year. Um, I think there's lots of opportunity. There is, of course, still talk of recession. But here in Montgomery County, things still seem to be moving along at a great pace. Yes, so far, so good. Have you found that you ha you work with, uh, how many talk shows do you have currently on Lone Star? Uh, right now, we have... I believe about nine live programs, and then we have about 10 recorded programs. So you get to work with a lot of people in a lot of different parts of the Conroe, Montgomery County area, representing different ideas, perspectives. What's their take on business going forward here in Montgomery County? Well, certainly Conroe is growing, and that means a lot of growth for all aspects of life here. Uh, outside that, I know being moved here for the city of Conroe, where we're in the building, the main city building downtown at Conroe Tower, uh, there's a lot of movement going on, a lot of new faces, a lot of – it's almost like a preparation for what's, what's to come. So I know there's a lot more uh, flexibility being instituted on different departments expecting the growth. They're hiring more, more personnel to help with the growth. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, everything in downtown, if you look at it as like a, you know, a small study, there's a lot of changes coming and a lot of variety of changes, too, which is always a welcome thing, meaning like different restaurants, different businesses, and then also different designations for different things going on in the whole city of Conroe. So, you know, you mentioned restaurants. That's one of the things I've noticed because I've been coming downtown Conroe haven't lived in the area that long, seven, eight years, but I was coming here on business, and that's one of the things I noticed. The downtown area has just been really revitalized. There are lots of restaurants. used to be I'd come here, and there were one or two if you had to grab lunch or something. Uh, what do you attribute all that growth to? I think it's – I think it's the way, the way I would say it is you see these reports of, you know, Conroe being the fastest-growing city – and it's not just reports. Like there are people showing up, and I think the demand is being met finally for, you know, f for the people who are trying to find different things. Especially with downtown Conroe being so old, you're limited to the nine square blocks. So there's only so much you can do. I look at it more like uh, like New York City. You know, there's only so much land in New York City. So, so similar to to here in Conroe, now people are putting a lot of money 
into redoing downtown Conroe, building buildings that are now two story tall, two story high, or three story high. And then you're also looking at uh, new opportunities across the railroad tracks, literally. Like there's a railroad track right here. If you didn't know, this is the old switch station for Conroe. So there's a lot of railroad tracks so that if, if you look at development around railroad tracks, it's always difficult to see which side you want to build on or are people moving. And one thing uh, I would encourage people to look up is I believe in 2019 or 2018, around that time, the city of Conroe paid for a study about growing Conroe. And I forget, I think it's an economic development study, and they have a plan. They uh, Now the city of Conroe is following a plan to absorb this growth that's coming, and downtown is part of that growth. And then it goes further out. Conroe is a really big town, uh, and it's, I think it might be the biggest city in Montgomery County. And so it's kind of one of those things where no one really realizes how big Conroe is if you're going you know, east to west, touching the, the borders. But uh, but that's that's what I see. They're they're implementing the plan finally, and they're doing things for the plan. A lot of people just make plans and they don't follow through. The city's doing the best they can to follow through on certain plans, certain phases. So, yeah, I agree with you. There's a lot of discussion that I I run into discussions, conversations. In fact, there's uh, one coming up, uh, a formal discussion up at Sam Houston in a couple weeks. The Montgomery County F uh, Foundation Community Foundation is hosting folks to talk about the infrastructure and the challenges and serving people and they, the folks that need a helping hand and, and the whole ball of wax that uh, you have to keep your eye on as you grow uh, in an area. So, and I see the execution of these plans by the, particularly the city. Speaking of size, one thing I've been told and I've read it since is that the land area that the city of Conroe uh, is located is actually larger than Austin, Texas, as far as land area. Uh, so like you say, there's lots and lots of trees and places that uh, that could eventually be used to grow within the city limits. So, uh, and with that comes a lot of responsibility and the need for infrastructure. And uh, thus far, what I see as someone who moved here, again, seven, eight years ago, they're doing a great job of, of meeting that demand, but it's a huge demand and it keeps growing, which I think is, is kind of interesting. What part does community radio, this is Lone Star Community Radio, uh, what part can, does or can community radio play in uh, helping in a positive way for this development to occur and, and benefit all, all sectors of the society here in Montgomery County. Well, when we first moved to Conroe to start Lone Star Community Radio, I definitely saw the the growth, but also the lack of communication between the whole county. You had you know ten different newspapers. You didn't have a television station. Uh, you didn't have a radio station that was purely for Montgomery County. I still think today. There isn't a radio station that's purely for Montgomery County. Um, and a lot of people, if you if you do a quick Google search and you just type in, you know, media Montgomery County, you'll find a lot of options. But then when you start looking at it, they're not they're not local. It's like they touch a, more than just Montgomery County. They'll you know, they'll go to Grimes County, they'll go to Harris County. And that's because Harris County is one of the biggest counties and that's where a lot of money is. So that's that's where they try to at least say, oh, yeah, we're still over there. But here uh, for radio and, and television, because we are now on television, if you didn't know, people are watching on your YouTube channel, and uh, we're also on Channel 12 here in Conroe. The, the importance I see radio and television is as the growth of the city and also Montgomery County, people are finding alternative ways to consume content. And uh, to me, Lone Star Community Radio has a great opportunity to be one of those uh, content providers to be consumed by local mo local people. Yeah, I think it, uh, community radio, as I've dug deeper and deeper into it, just in general, as it developed, particularly in the Midwest of the United States, uh, 30, 40 years ago, or even further, longer ago, back in the 40s, perhaps even the 30s, uh, small towns, small cities uh, utilize the community radio to be a place where people in the community always go to connect, find information, 
understand what's going on in the different sectors, the educational, the, the government, the schools, uh, all aspect businesses. Uh, and I know that looking at the Lone Star uh, homepage on the internet and the web uh, at IRLoneStar.com that you see that your programming and, and information really does reach into every corner of the city. What are some of the challenges? Uh, well, I need to preface this. Let me back up. Uh, last year, you converted the ownership uh, of the uh, of the station to a nonprofit entity. Talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges of operating a nonprofit business because it is totally different than a for-profit business in so many aspects, but in many ways it is similar. What's your experience been over the last year? Really, it's the the parallels in terms because in the nonprofit world, you'll learn very quickly that they're, they still operate in the same mindset as, say, a for-profit business, but they just use different terms, and it's figuring out those terms and applying it because you don't want to screw up. You know, because I, when I I was very hesitant about becoming a nonprofit just because of the unknown of it, and and it's something that you have to protect your status. You have to be proactive about being a good nonprofit because in today's world where there's a lot of people still giving, but it's also there's a more scrutiny involved because of you know your nonprofit status. Are they a good nonprofit? So that was really important to me with the transition of coming over to a 501c3. And the the current challenges the going forward is just maintaining that flow of communication to donors and sponsors, but also continuing our mission. Because our mission never really changed. I think that was a positive when we transitioned was the, the overall mission statement of the business never changed. And that's why I think we benefited so well changing over to a 5013c because we got to take – those benefits of becoming a nonprofit while keeping the same mission statement going on, on with providing community content. Uh, but the, the challenge is, is as growth comes is you have to figure out where things go and how to do it the most efficient efficient way. So that's what I've been my, – my challenge for the past, I don't know, six months has been trying to find different uh, solutions and then, you know, with all our volunteers, because all of our hosts are volunteers, so we're dealing with, I, I think I, I'm i in touch with probably around 30 to 40 people every month, you know, communicating with them, trying to get them on, use the studio for different production reasons, getting to make sure their show is live, or if it's not live, and, you know, all those kind of things. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, that's probably the biggest things coming up, is just making sure everything's set in place according to the law and according to our procedures that were similar to when we were uh, for-profit. You know, you touched on one thing, and I want to mention it, uh, is the fact that at, at Lone Star, uh, like many nonprofits, you depend on volunteers. And all the programming, uh, as far as the shows that are done locally and whatnot, these are all volunteers. These are people that want to do this, and they volunteer their time. This is not someone doing something for money, per se. So uh, I think that brings an interesting element to the programming uh, because, again, it's local people talking about local challenges, local issues, uh, typically non-political, but just issues of life and, and different aspects and offering advice in many cases, offering information about what's going on, things you can do in the city, et cetera. So uh, I, I really see the value particularly in a growing city, a growing county like we have here in Conroe, Montgomery County. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to our first break. We're going to take a short commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to continue the conversation with Dick and uh, Lone Star Community Radio and talk about some of the things that are be a challenge to his business and, and some of the major things that happened last year. So if you'll stick with us, we'll be right back with you. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1 and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com 
or call the station message line at 936-647-3776. Health Center Southeast Texas is a federally qualified health center. We accept Medicare, Medicaid, and most major private insurances. For our self-pay patients, we have a sliding scale discount program available. Our health centers have qualified providers and staff striving every day to provide the best quality of care to our patients. Services offered are family medicine, behavioral health services, telepsychiatry, and pediatrics. We have four area locations. Look at the Health Center Southeast Texas online at hcset.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour. I'm Rick Schistler. I'm your host. And we're in the middle of a conversation with Mr. Dick Schistler. Dick is the general manager and the owner of Lone Star Community Radio, which is where our program is broadcast from each and every week, Monday at 11 a.m. Well, Dick, when we went to break, we were talking about the growth of Conroe, tremendous growth, terrific growth of the Montgomery County area with Willis, Montgomery, the Woodlands. Uh, all these areas are just booming. Uh, but let me ask you this. Uh, it's it, there are a lot of media choices out there today for consumers. I mean, information streaming, uh, audio streaming, audio video, television programs, uh, a lot of places uh, that I can get information. What is it that you do? How do you differentiate yourself and get people to choose you versus the other choices that are available to them? Well, the way I look at it is with a variety of our programming, we're going to hit somebody because the way we attract newer shows is we always try to say, you know, anyone can start at any level. And I think that uh, brings in unique voices. And with those unique voices, you'll attract listenership because it's something different. It's always going to be different. Uh, and I enjoy that aspect of media is when you have somebody who's you, – you always get people who have been previously a broadcaster or you get somebody who's always wanted to do it. Both of them in front of you, they'll they bring different things to the table. So that's uh, a key element to attracting new people is you get to see and hear different voices, and then also you know everyone here is local. Our mission statement is kind of the same. You know, we provide uh, media content for Montgomery County, and I think that that has a huge appeal going forward because that would always be a need for people who are living in a town like Conroe, Montgomery County. Um, because I, I don't see Montgomery County being similar to Harris County or any other bigger county where there's just so many people that it's so hard to keep track of what's going on. We have a, we have a healthy balance here in Montgomery County where I think we can be relevant to everybody, all aspects of the county. So. Well, and I think that's very important, and as I alluded to earlier, that the, the radio station, the community radio, is growing right along with the county and the city and reporting to people, keeping people connected to that growth and what's happening in the various parts of the county, not just geographically, but with the government and with the schools and, and so on and so forth. And I think that is a very important consideration. Well, 2023 is in front of us, uh, and an obvious question or topic to discuss uh, for anybody, uh, business or even personal, is what challenges do you see for Lone Star in 2023? I I see the biggest challenge is the transition being in this new space. Uh, we moved over here roughly, I mean, right when COVID, after a little bit after COVID started, and then being partners with the city of Conroe always brings its own unique challenges. And we've definitely faced within that time period the last year when we converted to a nonprofit. So the, to me, it's kind of finishing out the implementation being here. Uh, we we want to work closely being the disaster channel for the, uh, 104.5, 106.1 is the disaster channel for emergencies for Conroe and kind of getting all that done and having a physical presence here is probably going to be the biggest challenge coming up this year is just working with the city. And for those that don't know, uh, Lone Star relocated to the first floor of City Hall, of Conroe City Hall. So this is a continuation of a partnership that has been in place for some time 
with the city of Conroe. So we're physically, the radio station is physically here within City Hall. Yeah. Uh, I can throw a football at the, <laughs> or a bowling ball, actually. Which Let's means try. if you visit City Hall on the first floor, you're going to walk typically right by the station. So, uh, and I think it, it's got a win win for everybody because it can connect the city and its people uh, and uh, its leaders directly with the station because your point of mind. Because uh, they see you or could see you every day, yeah. So I think that's a real win-win for everybody. Uh, even makes it a deeper uh, opportunity, if you will, or a better opportunity to uh, keep people aware of what's happening here in Conroe. One of the things that that you do is you offer talk shows, and you mentioned earlier that you have roughly, I think, nineteen. If I added it up right, some live, some are pre-recorded. Uh, meaning people come in the studio at a different time than it's actually broadcast. Uh, why is that so important to the community, these talk shows? Well, the important aspect of, I would say, traditional radio and then the world of podcasting is bringing the kind of hybrid to to radio. Because what happens with radio is people think it's on twenty, it's twenty four seven, so you have to be airing things. It's, it's more of a programming issue. And, and what I like about talk radio is bringing the podcasting kind of philosophy to it, where long form conversations can happen, and it's not like a, it's not a traditional radio in the sense of you're going to talk for six minutes, listen to two minutes of ads, talk for eight minutes, talk, listen to two minutes of ads. Uh, but the importance of talk shows. Is it really brings that unique voice that I've told, I have talked about before? Is that unique voice gets some airtime, and that the kind of that unique voice really will give a vo- give a voice to the city and also Montgomery County, that uniqueness to it. Well, and, I, and you know, I love the fact that really, basically, anybody can do a talk show. I mean, you have certain requirements, but yeah. if I've got an idea, I mean, you have one. I'm sorry. I right, said so you have one. Yes. So anyone can do it. Oh, okay. There's a there's a father son joke if you picked up on it. Uh, but the point being is that the opportunities there for people to come in and do these shows, uh, there's basically can be no cost depending on how you do it. Well, yeah, that's one thing to note on that is I love the variety of people who come in and their background when they want to do a show because it's very easy. It's just you have that hesitancy of you think it's going to be just such a, a burden on you. But I've always had this idea of doing a show about X, Y, Z. And one thing I love about the flexibility with our radio station and television station is we try to make it work. There isn't some just one set way. This is how we're going to do it. And if you can't fit in within these guidelines, you're not going to have a show. Uh, like to give an example, when we uh, moved over here, we have a lot more recording space. So we can have a lot going on at one time here, and we could have a live show right now, like we are live right now, but we could also be recording a show. And at our previous location, we had some of that flexibility, but now we have a lot more space because we want to do video while doing audio. So with the, the move, we're able to do those things and fulfill those needs for shows who can only record, and they can't do it live. Uh, but also with the background, is we uh, to give you an example of a show, it's – we have a show that's on Mondays today. Uh, it's Voices in Action, and it's at 2 o'clock, and it's a bilingual show. And she basically approached us because she wanted to do ac- advocacy for bridging the English-speaking and the Spanish, uh, Spanish-speaking people in Conroe and Montgomery County, do like a bridge. And she's like, can that be a show? And I was like, actually, that could be a great show. And so Voices in Action was born from that, and she had this concept, but when she met us, it, a light bulb went off where she's like, I'm trying to do this this outreach stuff, but I didn't even think about doing a radio television show. I never saw myself do it. Now this is like her main deal, her main pillar in her organization is doing this show once a week because it gives her a visual, uh, a visual presentation and also an audio presentation where she's reaching more and more people uh, instead of going out physically and being part of events and things like that. So there, like, shows can be coming from anywhere. At any point in time in anyone's life, uh, so that, that, that gives you an example of you know in a background that I like. I was like, that's unique. Like she didn't even want to do a show, but then when the light bulb went off, she's like, I guess I should do a show. So, 
you know, one of the things in 2023 and, and the move here uh, is allowed uh, is one, you've got uh, the ability to actually have a, a uh, do a TV show here. Uh, in other words, you'll have a stu you have a separate studio that can be set up to be like a studio at a national network or or whatnot or the local networks, uh, the evening news kind of thing, and and you can and do a TV show. Uh, and the other thing that I'm personally excited about to see in 2023 is the mobile uh, ability of the station to go out to locations to events and be able to talk with people and and make people aware of what's going on away from the station, out in the field. Again, just like normal or regular TV, I guess you would call it, uh, commercial TV. And so we have here in the station the equipment and the setup uh, more or less done uh, where we can have remotes. And I know you plan to do some events um, and attend events and represent uh, Lone Star Community Radio and some of the great community events that, that are out there. So what do you see in 2023 for the station, the growth or, or new capabilities that are going to be used uh, to provide additional or different content for your listeners? What, uh, what I really see happening is our content being on a daily schedule, meaning if you're looking for a daily resource of community content that's going on and like news sports you know weather all the kind of like the standards for a radio station i, I want to keep that going even on the weekends even at, like at certain points of the, at, at the at time of the day uh especially with live shows i think live shows are really fun but it's really hard to manage continue being live all day uh but i think it's doable and i think that's going to be one of our big goals is when we Go live on location. We'll have someone live in the studio, and so there's not there's not really a stop time. Once we start, we're starting for as long as possible for that day. So, well, it's to me it's very very exciting, and I again I think it goes hand in hand with the tremendous growth uh, it's happening in Conroe and the rest of Montgomery County uh, because the ability to communicate uh, not only locally but anywhere. Because you post the media and then people can watch it uh, from anywhere and get a sense of what's going on here uh, about that growth and how it's being managed and the good things that are happening. Uh, I think the opportunity for Conroe again and all of Montgomery County to benefit from the message being out there constantly uh, about what's happening right here in Montgomery County. One of the things I just want to take a second and relay, because you and I have talked uh, from time to time, and business owners uh, or business people listening to the show, which is the core listener that we have, uh, you're implementing some new software. That is always a challenge, uh, or historically has been a challenge for any business. I personally have been through a number of software. This one happens to do with donors uh, and sponsors and whatnot. Share with us some of the, uh, just in a, in a minute or two, Share with us some of the challenges uh, and what you hope to achieve with your software uh, when you're all you have it done. Well, well, to start with, the reason we were looking for software was when we, like we said, we converted to a nonprofit. So we had a for-profit procedure. You know, you had QuickBooks, you had the standard documentation. You know, and then you also had sponsors, and we had uh, a advertisers. Well, when we convert it over to nonprofit, like I said, those terms mean the same thing in a way, but they have to be labeled something different. So when we looked at what we were legally allowed to do, what we're allowed to say, uh, and especially following under FCC license and how we're allowed to do sponsorships, and uh, like for example, the word advertising cannot be labeled at all in any material. So that includes invoices that are being changed to say pledges and things like that. Like you add it, it's Really interesting. So I had to find software that would easily take what we were previously doing and making it where we could do it as a nonprofit and still kind of uh, still kind of operate the same way. Uh, so we found some software, and the, probably the hardest thing really looking for new management software or CMS software is you know your bookkeeping. 
because you got to make sure all these avenues are right and all the money matches up because everyone knows bookkeeping can cost a lot of money going down the line. So trying to find software that makes it easier for the bookkeeper and also for our end uh, because, you know, it's just that's part of how businesses operate. So, uh, but yeah, that that's when I try to find a solution. And then the difficulty with it is, again, it's just terms. Like I'm not... I'm not a bookkeeper. I'm not uh, – I don't know 100% of everything. I don't know if anyone's ever tried to use QuickBooks desktop version or online version. Things are changing all the time. So it's like if – I like I remember the phone call I had with this particular software company, and I'm like uh, listening to them talk about all these integrations, and they start saying terms I had no idea about. And I was like, I have to you know check on that. I don't really know. And that slowed us down because I didn't know. But now I know, and I learned it over a weekend, and – we move forward. So uh, the biggest challenge is, you know, trying to understand the new world of how things operate and trying to implement your world into that new world. Right. So, and it, it it's still an ongoing process. And ultimately, I would assume you, like everyone who brings new software into their business, particularly major like CMS type, you know, business operation software, in other words, a core part of operating the business, um, it will make things a lot more efficient and effective for your business, I assume, is your major goal. Well, that's the, that's the hope. Uh, I think it's something also you – like what we did was we looked at large nonprofits and what do they do to communicate to donors, communicate to sponsors. But then you try to see through that and how do they operate on the back end because I, I had uh, verbal communications with some local people here in Montgomery County – what services do they use? Do they, you know, do you have to do your own bookkeeping? Do you have someone do it once a month or twice, twice a month, or you know those kind of things? And really, you, I look at it as a stepladder system because we're going to be growing, so I have to kind of see where we need those changes because we don't need to do everything right now, uh, but you know eventually we will get there. So it's kind of like, all right, how do these people handle the growth and how much? Because with nonprofits, technically, what I understood is. Growth, it's just like businesses, growth is measured by intake of, of money. Right. So how much money did you intake? And then also where's that money going? And that's that's kind of the difference between a nonprofit and a for-profit. For-profits don't really need to tell anybody where that money's going. But for uh, nonprofits, it's kind of like we got to make sure all this money is going to the growth and the message and the mission statement. So that's where I was kind of looking <coughs> at like a step ladder, like all right, how do we achieve when we get to this point, when do we take that step? And these are the steps we need to take to get to that point. And we got to, uh, that's probably one of the things going forward with, you know, software and decision making like that. Yeah. Well, it all makes sense. And one of the things I want people to understand is that uh, nonprofits obviously work on donations. Lone Star, just like every other nonprofit, basically, uh, we have donors, individuals like myself and whatnot that donate, uh, in my case, on a regular basis. But with the sponsors are very, very important. They sponsor the station, they sponsor. Uh, particular shows they sponsor you know different aspects and and then tie their business basically as a sponsor then you become part of the community radio here in Montgomery County in Conroe uh, which I think is a great tie-in uh, for a business to have among others out there in the nonprofit world is to be tied into the main communication element that's available along with the career and community impact it's truly about communications. Well, Dick, I can't thank you enough for taking time today to join us. Of course, for you to be behind the, 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 the board there and running the show and engineering for us, which I always appreciate. If people want to participate, if people want to donate uh, or become a sponsor, what's the best way for them to communicate with uh, Lone Star Community Radio? Well, the best way to communicate with us is... In the description, if you're listening on the radio or if you're watching on TV, visit us at IRLoneStar.com, and we have a Shows tab, and you can communicate with all our shows. And then there's also a Contact Us tab. If you're watching on Facebook, listening on podcast, YouTube, in the description below, there's information on the weekly business hour, but there's also information about this, the radio station itself. And I believe there is a donation button right there if you want to donate to the show, particularly uh, the weekly business hour. There's a donation button right there. Click it and donate it and you know let's make sure that software is working and then, uh yeah that that's probably the best way if you're and if you're that type of listener so well i appreciate it and 
I appreciate everyone listening to our program. I really enjoy doing this. I'm a volunteer. Uh, this program, I put my script together. I seek out my guests, and I encourage anyone who's out there that has an idea that would fit in with the community at large and want to have a discussion and create their own content, their own show, then reach out to Lone Star Community Radio. Uh, the second half of the show today, uh, we are going to the mailbag, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, Sherman from Oklahoma wrote us an email and said, quote, my marketing plan was generally ineffective in 2022. Where do I start to make it work better in 2023? Uh, a general question, but a very, very good question, and I'll respond to uh, his challenge. And then we'll finish up today on our one best consult tip of the week. What is your biggest challenge in 2023? I went out there and pulled in lots of answers to that question. There have been a lot of surveys out there, and I'll share some of the big ones that I got in and maybe give you an idea of at the very least, what other people are looking, small business people are looking at as their biggest challenge. So I encourage you to stay with us. We're going to be right back. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the message line at 936-647-3776 to take your first step into the radio world. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. Welcome back. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler. I'm your host. I hope you've enjoyed the program. Uh, if you missed part of our first segment today, as always, uh, this show will be posted in a couple days out there on social media. You can go to IRLoneStar.com, which is Lone Star Community Radio. You also can go to one, that's the number one, bestconsult.com uh, to look at uh, the program and listen to what you might have missed. And you can share the program, and I encourage that and would deeply appreciate it. Share it with people in business that are looking for the same thing that you're looking for, information, looking for a place to go to communicate the current challenges and being in business today as a small business in America. Well, first, I want to go to the mailbag for just a few minutes uh, and respond to Sherman. Uh, as I mentioned before the break, Sherman wrote us an email. It was fairly lengthy, but basically distilling it down my marketing plan was generally ineffective in 2022 where do i start to make it work better well again a wonderful question anytime you have a plan any kind of plan really that just doesn't perform uh, the way it should uh, there's lots of things you can do first thing go back and evaluate etc cetera, etc cetera. but one of the things i think is so important that i find that many of us Many small business people particularly don't really drill down far enough, and it's, it's an issue that, to me, is one of the core issues of building a marketing plan. And that has to do with who are you selling to, okay? Obviously, the focus of the marketing plan should be the buyer, but have you answered that question? Have you drilled down into that to understand who you're selling to? You may think you have an idea, but do you really? Do you really understand? I'm going to give you several of the questions or topics I would just spend a little bit of time and think about and possibly go out and get some information. Uh, like, what are the goals and dreams of your buyers, of your potential buyers who will purchase your services or products or both? Uh, what are their goals? Walk in their shoes, right? How do they gather information to solve their problems? In other words, 
you're putting together marketing, which includes advertising and other things. How is the the potential buyer, how are they uh, gathering the information they look for in order to buy the kinds of products or services that you offer? You know, it's, it's got to match up. You've got to be where they're going to be, right? It's pretty simple. But have you put some thought into that? Are you in the right place? Are you there with the right information? What are some of the things that are most important to them when they make this purchase, particularly of your products or services? Ask yourself that question. What is the most important, the most important things when they make a purchase or look for a vendor for these products and services? And what does success look like to them? In other words, what are their general uh, goals of their business? And again, very general. In other words, success in making this purchase. In other words, building a good relationship with the vendor. So they'll reorder. They'll count on you for information, uh, for a quality product. When they have an issue, someone will be there to talk with them, respond to them, communicate with them, and help them solve that problem. Okay? Uh, a lot of companies fall down at that point. Their customer service, particularly after the sale, just doesn't come close. And uh, there's a lot of horror stories, but let me tell you, for every horror stories, there's 10 stories about companies that just don't have it down and how to communicate and how to solve a problem uh, with a customer. Uh, you need to work on that or at least check off, like a, check, a checklist, check off that you have that answered. You have a process. You have people that are handling that and doing it well each and every day. Um, what might hold them back from buying uh, a product or service that you offer? What might hold them back from doing business with your firm? Uh, just as a particular question, be sure you ask yourself that. Is there anything I'm doing, anything I'm showing, anything I'm saying, the whole process, right, that would cause people to wait, to delay, to question whether they really want to buy my product or services. And finally, how do they come to a purchase decision? You know, it's funny, when you purchase things for your business, whether it be material to be used in a production or equipment or anything in the business, something you're going to simply resell, repackage perhaps, what is the decision process, generally speaking, for the businesses that buy your products and or services? You need to understand what it is, not specific to each and every buyer. Sometimes, yes, particularly if you have big ticket items, but most importantly, generally, how does it work? You know, these statistics that 80, 90 percent of the buyers on a business to business basis, they at one point in their purchasing decision process go to the Web. And they look at your website and they gain not only knowledge, but a sense of how strong, how good of a company you really are. So that's what I'm talking about. So Sherman and anyone else whose marketing plan may not be performing as well as you hoped, who are you selling to? Who's your buyer? Obviously, focus on them. Now I want to switch gears a little bit uh, and talk about the one best consult tip of the week. Um, what is your biggest challenge in 2023? I have four of them that seem to be somewhat repetitive. They're, the wording was sometimes different, but they all kind of came back to the same point. And the first one was discipline. A number of people put out there that they needed more discipline in the operation of their business. They needed to stick to task and follow their calendar. In other words, they need to be more efficient in, them, in their own personal conduct as well as setting the standard in their business that they were losing time, effort, and perhaps money uh, because their business, they themselves, were not as efficient. So discipline was one of the big ones I saw out there. Number two, fairly obvious, increase revenues. That's my biggest challenge in 23. I've got to increase sales, increase revenues, and increase my business. That one has to be on every list probably every year because uh, most of us are trying to grow our businesses. Avoiding surprises. Well, you know, over the last few years, we've had lots of surprises, right? We've had COVID. Uh, we've had uh, uh, weather events in some parts of the country. Uh, all kinds of little surprises. We've got 
uh, inflation. We've got potential recession. Some place in the country it's already hit. These are quote unquote surprises and people say they want to avoid them. Well, you can't always anticipate, but part of being in business is kind of having your own little crystal ball and at least forecasting when say a recession is coming, what are you going to do? What are you going to adjust? Some people need to adjust. Some people don't have to adjust. Some people do well, better in a recession. Some people, most people don't, but you have to be forward looking and uh, you're not going to avoid all surprises. But I guess after what's happened over the last, what, three, four years, people, uh, one of the top things out there is avoiding any more surprises. And like I said, COVID, I don't know how we could have avoided it. Uh, we were forced into it, so to speak. In other words, it just came on weather events, the same thing happens. And lastly, buying back time so it can work on promoting and drive my business. In other words, offloading, delegating to other people to do certain things, certain jobs, so I, as a business owner, have time to do other things, particularly promote my business. And, you know, delegation, that's an entire program, probably an entire C series of how to effectively delegate and, and do business with third parties and, and certain things on accounting, uh, bookkeeping services and whatnot. But the point is, that's their biggest challenge. They know they need to offload. The business has grown to a point that they need to offload these things and focus on what they do best. And I think that that's a worthy challenge, but one that can easily be handled. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you. And I want to thank Dick again for the, his update. And I encourage you to check out Lone Star Community Radio at IRLoneStar.com. And if possible, make a donation today. There's a button there, as Dick mentioned, help out the community radio station, particularly if you do business in this community of Conroe and Montgomery County. We appreciate it. And the second thing I'd like you to do, put a note on your calendar and plan to join us again next Monday, 11 a.m., right here at Lone Star Community Radio. And again, a copy of today's program, both video and audio, will be posted on the Weekly Business Hour page, Facebook, YouTube, and many other social media sites. Give it a couple days, say till Wednesday. It'll be there for your review. And again, I encourage you, would ask you to please share it if you can with other business people. And finally, every week, until next week, stay engaged. Stay engaged in your business and always, always keep focus on what counts to you and your business. Thanks so much.